So the Jaguars on Sunday went to enemy territory and beat the Los Angeles Chargers by a score of 38 to 10. And my main takeaway is that the Jaguars are good. So the Jaguars not only beat the Los Angeles Chargers, but it was another absolute beatdown. I mean, if you look at the Jaguars' schedule so far, they lost to the Commanders because they just didn't really know how to score points yet or or capitalize on these different turnovers. There were just a few different issues in week one. So we said, okay, you know, this is a young team that's kind of expected, uh, or not maybe not a young team, but just a bunch of new players playing together. It might take a little while to be able to get used to all playing together the way they want to. Well, it didn't take long. And in, in week two, the Jaguars defeated the Colts 24 to nothing. But, you know, a bunch of people said, okay, it's the Colts. The Jaguars always beat the Colts no matter how bad they are. The real test is the Chargers. And the Jaguars beat the Chargers 38 to 10. And it's arguably probably a better victory than it was against the Colts. I know it wasn't a shutout, but it felt like, look, you put together, you finally went on a away game since 2019. Uh, you, you win back-to-back -back games. You beat a couple of tough opponents, and it wasn't just a lucky week. You know, you could have accounted the Colts to maybe being a lucky week and then the Jaguars go back down to earth. But, you know, Chargers and all the power rings were like a top-10 team. I mean, a bunch of a bunch of people respected them, saw them as a true Super Bowl contender, and that's what the Jaguars were going against. Then now people are really starting to respect what the Jaguars are doing, and now – you know, they're starting to move up those power rankings. And now people are saying, okay, this probably is the favorite to win the AFC South. I mean, first of all, when you look at Trevor Lawrence, he was phenomenal this game. Um, 28 for 39, which is a 72% completion percentage, 262 yards throwing, three touchdowns, zero interceptions. Just a phenomenal, near flawless game from Trevor Lawrence. You know, on the season, 77 for, for 111, which is a 69.4% completion percentage, seven, 772 yards passing and six touchdowns versus one interception. So, I mean, when you look at it, he is, you know, you went in saying, okay, potentially by the end of the year, Trevor Lawrence could be the best quarterback in the AFC South. Now it's not even a debate. Trevor Lawrence is by far the best quarterback in the AFC South, and he hasn't even hit his maximum potential yet. I mean, it was crazy how two weeks ago we had the Jags fan base, not me, but a lot of people freaking out that this guy might be a bust. And, you know, you had some people talking about, you know, we should be looking to draft another guy or whatever. And now you look at him, now he's edging toward being a potential top 10 quarterback in the NFL. I mean, when you weigh different things about how different quarterbacks around the league are playing and some are dropping, I don't know, man. Right now, like he is really going into that territory. So he's been just phenomenal. And it's funny with Trevor because when I watch him, I do try to be pretty critical of him. You know, when I saw him early on in this game, you know, he missed a few throws, you know, a couple throws, some first down type of throws. And it's like, come on, man, you got to get your stuff together. But I'm always saying I need to see the full picture. You know, I need to see start to finish because what if he plays better in the second half? <laughs> and that's what we saw, man. I mean, he was just putting on a show in the second half. I mean, some of those touchdown passes were incredible. I mean, could have been four if the Evan Ingram, you know, touchdown was made. So, I mean, it was just it's been an absolute treat to watch and I love seeing his his you know maturation as a quarterback and it it feels like we got a really good one I mean finally we have a quarterback in Duval so I'm I'm just really excited about that and just the Jaguars this game dominate all sides of the ball I mean when you look at when I went into this game I said look in order to beat the Chargers you have to hit Justin Herbert and he also had to keep the ball out of Justin Herbert's hands the Jaguars did both of that Time of possession, the Jaguars had the ball 38 minutes and 27 seconds of this game. That is controlling the ball and just controlling the time of possession. You know, there were some great performers. Zay Jones had his real breakout game, 10 receptions for 85 yards, one touchdown. He was phenomenal. Um, Christian Kirk continuing to be a top receiver, six receptions, 72 yards, one touchdown. I mean, Marvin Jones also had some good stuff. He had a, you know, four receptions, 33 yards, a really good touchdown from him. Just look, I mean, three different touchdowns to three different players, you know, passing. Like, you got to love that. And now, next up, we can talk about like James Robinson. I mean, 
just huge shout out to James Robinson, man. I mean, people like it's like we always try to count him out, like you know, NFL and even a little bit locally because it's like, look, we have ETN, cooler name, bigger school, like faster and all this stuff. But man, James Robinson just. He's just really good, and it, <laughs> I don't know how, but it's like they they replace his ACL and he, or his, his uh, Achilles, and it looks like he's somehow faster. I mean, seventeen attempts, one hundred yards, one touchdown. He's got a touchdown in each of the first three contests, and really, you bring an ETN. 13 attempts for 45 yards, and, you know, you're seeing this dynamic with the Jaguars' offense in the running game. It's like, you know, you have you have James Robinson in there really most of the first half, and he's in there just kind of gashing him. And then the second half, it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, defenses, we have ETN too. And ETN goes out there and displays his speed, and it's just – it's really fun to watch. I mean, it really is. Um, now, Justin Herbert this game, look – the Jaguars shut down Justin Herbert, and look, I understand that, look, he was hurt and all this different stuff, but I don't want that to discount what we did, because if you guys saw that one throw that Justin Herbert made, it was incredible. I mean, he threw it across his body, like, way down the field, a dart down the field. Look, Justin Herbert had the ability to be able to make all the throws this game, but the Jaguars went in there, they harassed him, they were covering well, they were getting good pressure, and they never gave him the opportunity to do anything. So, yeah, he was... 25 of 45, 56% completion percentage, 297 yards, one touchdown, one interception, one fumble um, in the pocket by Dewan Smoot. I mean, it was just incredible. And the defense is just, I mean, you got to give it up to the defense, man. I mean, these last two games, they let like one touchdown drive go. And, I mean, Josh Allen's been incredible. Devin Lloyd, I mean, like... <laughs> It's incredible. I mean, we're sitting here. We always hype up these guys, and they come in, and they don't live up to expectations. But, you know, Devin Lloyd is out here, boom, automatically. Already two interceptions. I think he's, like, leading the NFL in, like, pass breakups. I mean, just talk about an absolute beast. You know, the, the a lot of times you look at things and, like, positional value, like running backs don't go high. And, and off-ball linebackers like, like Devin Lloyd – you know, these guys are getting dropped because they're not very important. But, I mean, you look at a guy like Devin Lloyd, you can't tell me he's not worth, you know, if he went in the top 10, that wouldn't have been worth it. Just incredible stuff. Roy Robertson Harris is just really having a good year. I can, I can honestly, I can name everybody on the defense. Everybody's doing good. I mean, the Jaguars let up 10 points the last two games. I mean, it's just, it's been an awesome effort. And just really Mike Caldwell, I mean, shout out to him. I mean, when you looked at this team, you know, before the year, you said, okay, we feel good about Doug Peterson because, look, Doug Peterson's done it before. He's been an offensive coordinator. He's been a head coach. You know that that is his offense. So you trust Doug Peterson. But the big question mark is Mike Caldwell. And the big question is because he's never been a defensive coordinator before. What's it going to be like? Is he Just because he's he was like a linebacker's coach under Todd Bowles doesn't mean that, boom, it's going to translate. He's going to be great. But, I mean, he comes in here and... Look at this defense that he's putting together. I mean, this he's having these guys play really exotic looks. I mean, did you guys see <laughs> did you guys see Trayvon Walker break up a pass like he was an NFL safety or a cornerback? I mean, I was sitting there like, oh, and you know, in the past we see these guys drawn back in coverage and it's like, what are we doing? That looks ridiculous. But, you know, we have the defense now that's allowing these guys to go back there and really have you know, a bunch of stuff. So just shout out to Mike Caldwell. This is his defense. I mean, I imagine Doug Peterson, for the most part, is pretty hands-off with this kind of thing. Um, but, yeah, Mike Mike Caldwell has his team playing at a really high level. And, you know, the thing about it is, like, you know, look, when we were all talking about fire balky in the offseason, a big reason, look, we were reading all these reports. I remember reading a report where, like, you know, the coaches and were pretty upset with him because, like, Trent Balky would never ask the coaches – like what kind of players that they want to draft. It was just, and I think it was Chip Kelly that said that. Um, but it seems like with Balky, like it, it, it's almost like Mike Caldwell and Balky sat down and then Mike Caldwell said, these are the types of players that I want for my defense and went out and got them because like all these guys are playing so perfectly in his scheme. And even guys from last year, I mean like Rayshon Jenkins is having a great year. Um, you know, Dewan Smoot's having a really good year. It's like, I don't know, man, like just talking about, you know, and I don't, I don't like, I don't watch all the Tampa Bay's games, but Mike Hall was done a really good job of understanding the personnel coming in here and making sure that these guys are in the right position to succeed. And he's doing just that. So just big shout out to Mike Hallwell. That's been super exciting. Um, defense coordinator for the Jags. 
And, you know, just some other little notes. I mean, you know, there are some things that kind of go unnoticed. I mean, I think Evan Ingram is having a really good year. And I remember Giants fan telling us, oh, he drops everything. He sucks. But Evan Ingram has no drops on the year. And Evan Ingram, I don't know if y'all watch his mic'd up. And just his energy is awesome. I mean, he's out here like, you know, it's, it's like he's a fan out there playing for the Jags. I mean, he loves this team. He loves being a part of it. It's just really cool to see. Like, I'm really liking what I'm seeing out of Evan Ingram. I mean, he's, he's not this, like, elite tight end putting up top five tight end numbers. But, I mean, you know, he's out there. He's a really willing blocker. I mean, he was out there, like, blocking Khalil Mack and stuff. I mean, he's not necessarily pushing anybody back, but he's getting in the way, slowing things down. So, you know, that's awesome to see. Also, we might have a field goal kicker. Riley Patterson on the year is 7 for 8 on field goals, 7 for 7 on extra points. You know, we haven't been really talking about him in a couple weeks because the Jaguars haven't needed him. We're beating the Colts by you know, 24, we're beating the Chargers by four touchdowns. So we haven't really done it. And and really with this team, man, like it's really hard to find weaknesses. I mean, if I'm going to sit here and talk about negatives, it's nitpicking. You know what I mean? At, at that point, it's nitpicking. Like you could say, sometimes I feel like the run game, you know, maybe it's kind of slow to get up there and keep going. But look, sometimes you need to run, 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 and boom, 50 yard touchdown run. You know what I mean? That's kind of how things play and you know maybe there's some weaknesses like Darius Williams isn't playing all that great so far but overall man most of these players are doing good these players that like you know before the year when I'm talking about how the Jaguars will be great avoid the injury bug like we need our rookies and second year guys to like really really contribute and all do great and that's exactly what's happening Trayvon Walker um, Devin Lloyd I mean Tyson Campbell Andre Sisco all these guys are just taking their taking their play to another level. So that's just really awesome. So, yeah, I mean, it's – and also the last thing, Trevor Lawrence has to take his play to another level, and he's just been this, that. So it's such a treat. I'm looking forward to watching this team play every Sunday and just being able to cover a team that's good. I mean, we're good. We're winning. We're competent. Doug Peterson, just an amazing head coach. I'm, I'm so happy that we hired him. I mean, in retrospect – I know a lot of people wanted like Byron Lethwich and stuff, but this was this had to have been the move. Doug Peterson was perfect for what we needed, bringing in a guy who's been a, been a head coach before, been around bad cultures. That's you know a true quarterbacks guy. I mean, you know we couldn't you know Byron Lethwich could have been great, but who knows he could have been Nathaniel Hackett. You know what I mean? I, I so it's uh man, it's it's an it's really is an awesome time right now. And the Jaguars this Sunday. Revenge game for Doug Peterson. They're playing the Eagles. The Eagles are three zero. The Jaguars are two and one. Man, it's just you know we're halfway. You know we're we're not halfway. We're not even a quarter way through the year, and it's like we know that we're gonna have a pretty good team, and we're gonna have a chance to win every game. Like it feels like every game we're in, we have a chance. You can't look at the schedule and really point out any guaranteed losses at this point. So it's just awesome. Now, last note I do want to say, like, I don't know what my content's going to be like this week. You know, in Orlando tomorrow, the hurricane is supposed to start hitting us. So, you know, if it's in and out of here, like, I don't know if I'll have power back. I'm, I'm hoping, really hoping I'll be able to do the live stream on Sunday because I'm hoping that power's back on. Um, but if not, you know, I'm going to have different videos I'll probably do on my phone. So, you know, we'll just, uh, we'll definitely play it by year. I really hope everybody's safe during the, uh, you know, during a hurricane that's coming up, it's definitely scary times. You know, I got a lot of friends in Tampa, Orlando. I know it's not supposed to hit Jacksonville very much, but you never know what the direction of these things, what's going to happen. So just wanted to wish everybody that to stay safe. Um, man, go Jags. Talk about just bringing some optimism into our life. It's just, uh, it's just a lot of fun. So with all that said, really appreciate you guys watching this video. And, uh, Okay, Jacksonville Jaguars, too much for your crew to handle. Keep it lit, and this is the number one YouTube channel by UCF Jaguar. Yeah, we about to blast off. If you've been a fan, then this is the dopest platform. Yeah, never hold back. Gotta represent for the teal and black.